everyone. Today I'm going to do a really exciting video. I've always loved watching top anything videos. Top 5 favorite lipsticks, top 10 favorite blushes, top 20 favorite palettes. And I like them in any sort of format, but I know that lately the ranking style has been all the rage. And I'm late to the bandwagon because I am late to you too, but I figure better late than never. So I've decided to do my own top 10 blushes specifically for the winter. And we are gonna do this ranking style. It's pitch black outside. This is the first video I am ever filming with artificial lighting. I do have a ring light. I have no idea how this is gonna go. In the past, I have always filmed with natural light. So you guys are gonna have to let me know if this is good enough because I know YouTube is now spoiled by amazing lighting. Like everyone has these gorgeous cameras and gorgeous lighting and knows how to use filters and all sorts of other things. And I'm over here just like pressing a button and go. I don't know how to do anything. So please be kind, but let me know where you feel like I have room for improvement. I'm sure there's tons of room for improvement. So before we get started, I wanted to welcome anybody that is new to my channel and please consider sticking around and subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you know every time I upload a video. I'm trying to film a bit more. I'm definitely committing to filming at least once or twice a week and posting at least once or twice a week, depending on the week. So that's what we're starting with and we'll see how it goes. So for my top 10 winter blushes, you will probably notice a theme, even though the range of colors is quite drastic. We're going to have everything from a very shimmery light pink to really, really deep berry. You will notice though that overall the pink and the berry theme is kind of what I gravitate towards throughout the winter. So let's start off with number 10. My 10th top favorite blush is in the 10th spot only because it's such a unique product. It is for most people probably a highlighter, even though it was marketed as a blush. I'm not sure if it's still made, probably not. It's by Cargo. It is the blush in Louisiana. And it is really more like a highlight. It's like this pinky, sparkly gorgeousness. I wear this as a blush, not even so much as a blush topper. Usually on days where I just wanna have a very glowy cheek, I will go in with bronzer and then I will gently put this on uh, as a blush. That will have to be my number 10 just because it's such a specialty item. It's not something I would wear every day, but it's definitely something I really primarily reach for only in the winter time. And I love that shimmery cheek that it gives and that pinky color. For number nine, I have this mini NARS blush. Those of us that used to or still are rouge from several years ago will remember as being the gift that Sephora would give you for spending a thousand dollars at their store. This little mini blush. So I remember a lot of people oh, a few years back were panning this and you know always jokingly saying that like this blush cost a thousand dollars. This is in a ridiculously difficult name to pronounce as most NARS names are. It's like Gulu or Gu Gului or Guli or who knows. And it is a really beautiful mid-toned pinky berry i mean on me it is quite quite colorful it does definitely stand out because i am so pale but you will see this is not the darkest blush that i like for the winter and honestly the only reason this is in the number nine spot is because it's so small it gets a little bit lost in my collection i do enjoy it when i remember to reach for it in the winter and all 10 of these I love, I like the formula of all of these. I like how they apply. None of them are patchy or streaky. It's really more in order of use at this point. So NARS Gulu or Guli is a number nine. For number eight, uh, this is something that is in my January Shop by Stash. This is the Becca Luminous Blush in Dahlia that I've just recently picked up at TJ Maxx. By recently, of course, I mean in 2019 since I am on a no buy in 2020. And honestly, the only reason this is in number eight is because it is so deep and so intense 
for somebody like me. I have to be so careful with this one. It is a really deep, beautiful, luminous, as the name suggests, color. But yeah, I absolutely love this blush so far, but I've only used it a handful of times, so I didn't feel like it was fair to rank this any higher, but I did want to include it because I have been really enjoying it this winter. So that is the Becca Luminous in Dahlia at number eight. Number seven is another blush in my Shop My Stash. And the only reason this is not ranked any higher is because I like more of those mid-toned warmer pinks. Like this one is lighter and a bit cooler, but for the winter, it does give a really nice flush. It's really, really pretty. In the other seasons, I tend to lean more nude or apricot or like more of a mid-tone pink. Like today I have a blush on from my pan in 2020 and that is definitely much more of a nude but for the winter time i really enjoy these pinky colors this is lovely it has that come in from the cold flush but without being too dark so that is in number seven number six number six is a limited edition nars blush in almeria this is a blush that was one of the few items that I actually hunted down after it became discontinued and I think bought from a YouTuber who was doing a declutter and was selling some of their items on either Poshmark or just on their channel. I honestly don't remember by now, guys. And the reason for why this is in a sixth place is because I love the formula. I do love the formula and I do reach for this blush once in a while, but the color, the color is a bit too deep for my skin tone. So unlike the Becca Luminous Flush in Dahlia, which has a bit more berry, this has more of like a grayish undertone. It's a very deep mauve. I love mauves, but this is a bit too dark. It comes off on my skin almost like I am bruised at times like if I don't apply it just quite right because it really is more of like a deep wine color on me it like loses a lot of the mauve and instead becomes more of like a darker wine color you'd think that the Dahlia is even more deep and dark but somehow when I tap my brush off maybe because it's a bit more shimmery and this is a matte this one looks a teeny bit less crazy on me than this one, but I adore the color and I adore the formula and I still can pull it off. I just have to really be careful and be mindful of how I'm applying it. So yeah, that is uh, NARS Almeria, which is no longer available, unfortunately, because of course NARS does a lot of limited edition products. Okay, we're now in our top five. So here is where we have some that are much more wearable for my skin tone and a few that still have that lovely rich berry tone. We're gonna start off with number five, the Illamasqua Powder Blusher in Naked Rose. I really should have done some research before filming this to see if a lot of these are still available. I remember Illamasqua blushes were very, very popular on YouTube, but we're talking probably over five years ago. I still have two of mine, the only two I ever purchased, and this one is still to this day one of my favorites. I absolutely love the Illamasqua blushes. They are very powdery, but they apply beautifully. They're so great for somebody with a lighter skin tone like me because they're very pigmented, so you do have to definitely brush off the excess. But they're so blendable that even if you go overboard, you can make sure to fix it up and really you know, blend it out beautifully. It's such a beautiful, gentle pink to the touch. It is just silky. I mean, you can, I can't even describe how this feels when you touch this. It is just the most silky blush I've ever touched in my life. It is so finely milled and pressed in there. It, your finger glides, your swatches glide, your brush glides. It's beautiful. And honestly, the only reason this is number five and not higher is because I just sometimes forget about it because I have so much blush. But every time I do remember, 
I'm so excited to use it. This is this is definitely one of my favorite blushes for all year round. I just happen to really love the pinky tones in the winter as well. For number four, we have one of my probably all-time favorite formulas, and that is the Clinique Cheek Pop Blushes. And one of these is in my Project Pan, not in this color, of course, because this is definitely one of those once in a while blushes for me. This is in number seven, Cola Pop. I love this blush. And the cool thing about it is when you look at it, you think, whoa, lady, what are you doing holding that being as pale as you are? These are buildable. These you don't, when you put your brush in, they don't pick up product. They don't fly everywhere. They're really firmly pressed in there and they don't go on like clown cheeks. They are buildable. So you can build this up and make it, I'm sure, quite crazy, but you don't have to. You can just go in once and it'll give you this beautiful berry flush of color. So you could even see it like on my finger you, you feel like it would be a lot. It's got color, but it's not like crazy, crazy. And this is a finger swatch. Finger swatches are always a lot more intense than anything you're gonna put on your face. So I absolutely love this blush. And this is my fourth. Next to our drugstore blushes that I've had both for a while and I still love them. This one is the CoverGirl True Blend Blush. Do they still make these? I hope they still make these. I, I CoverGirl seems to be whipping out products left and right and center. I would have loved this blush even more if the packaging was better because this is what we're working with. And honestly, because of the packaging, there was a part of me that was gonna put it lower, but it would not have been fair to the product that is inside. I do love the product. This is one of the first slightly glowy blushes I owned a few years back and kind of what made me fall in love with having a little bit of a glowy cheek in the winter time. So this is in, I never even told you guys what this is called. Okay, this is the CoverGirl True Blend Blush in Medium Rose. I remember these did make a little bit of a splash on YouTube for a hot minute a few years back, but then they disappeared. I don't know, maybe because they were discontinued and I know those channels that make a lot of review and tutorial videos they try not to use discontinued products on their channel because their viewers can't get them but i'm working with the no buy for 2020 and the whole point is for me to actually use what i have whether it's been discontinued whether it's limited edition or not so if you guys have any suggestions for the rest of us on anything similar if you own this one and you own anything else that is a dupe of course I'll let us know but yeah i do love this blush this is my number three for number two, we've got the Essence Satin Touch Blush. These blushes are so lovely. I only have this one. I say I only have this one, like this girl needs any more blush. We realize top 10 of many is what we're dealing with today. But yeah, this is in Satin Love. This is really an all year round blush for me, but I do tend to reach for it just a teeny bit more in the winter months because again, it's like this dusty pink that I absolutely love with a nice gray sweater to have these kind of cheeks or with a sweater that's more like a creamy or a mauve color. This is just so beautiful. Really, these last two are really lovely, but I, I do think I like the formula of this Essence Satin Touch Blush just a teeny bit more and maybe the color just a teeny bit more. So it's slightly edged out the CoverGirl True Blend, but I do love these and both of them have absolutely horrific packaging. Like, why do my favorite blushes have to be falling apart? Can brands make these better? Like the Clinique Cheek Pop, and I get it, this is $20, this is what, like three. But it's similar packaging, and yet this one, I feel like is unbreakable. Watch as I say that. And then this one, I feel like if I breathe on it, if I just go, it's gonna fall apart. I wish brands would make their packaging sturdy. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be beautiful. I get it. We're, it's like a drugstore makeup over here, just a few dollars, but just make it durable. Is that too much to ask? Uh. All right, drum roll please. My number one blush. You have seen it if you've watched my other videos on my channel already. 
It was in my January shop, my stash. I don't know when I'll be posting this video. I am filming it at the very end of January. So hence, shall we address the elephant in the room, which is my tree? Yes, I know it needs to come down. And I'm just milking the last few days because I just don't have the heart yet to take it down. I absolutely love having the tree and the lights and still being festive. So I'm trying to film a few videos with the tree still there, but if you're seeing it in February, most likely the tree is gone by now, but I do wait and take my, the, my tree down as late as I possibly can. I'm also Russian, so our holidays come 12 days later than everybody else because Russian Orthodox is on a different calendar. So our Christmas is January 7th, and I usually don't get my tree until basically end of December, you know, right, right before they stop selling them. So that's why my tree tends to last about a month from end of December to end of January. Sorry, that was a total tangent about my tree. So now we've reached my number one winter blush. And that has to be my Urban Decay Afterglow 8 Hour Powder Blush in Rapture. This was in my January shot, my stash. This kind of has it all. This has the dusty pink and the berry all combined into one blush. And it's still wearable for my skin tone. It's not too dark. It's not too light because I do prefer a little bit more blush in the winter time for the most part. And I just adore this blush. I love the formula. I think I have three of these in different colors. It has a slight, it's a matte blush. Well, I don't know. I think I've always thought it was a matte blush, but honestly, after talking about it in my January shot, my stash, I realized it's probably more of like a satin. It's a satin blush and it has just a gorgeous, gorgeous finish. It's so blendable. It's so easy to use. I love these blushes. I wish they hadn't discontinued them. I think they have. I don't know why. Like, I don't understand why brands discontinue things every two years. Is it just so that we buy more stuff? Is that the only reason? Like, are the formulas really that much better? I haven't bought blush too recently. So somebody please tell me all of the newest blushes that you have picked up are they like so much more mind-blowing than some of these older blushes? Is this why brands are coming out with new blushes? Are the new formulas better? Because I still love this and they stopped making it. I don't know why. I just don't know why. But yeah, so that was my top 10 winter blushes. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. I had fun picking them out from all of my blushes and really thinking through which ones I use and then trying to rank them. This felt like the right order for me at the moment. And we'll see, maybe I'll change my mind. I'm sure I'll change my mind uh, probably by the time next winter rolls along. We'll see how many of these stick around in my collection through this no buy year. I would love to hear what some of your top favorite blushes for the winter are. I know I can't run out and buy them, but I would love to admire them and look them up and see if we have similar or different tastes. Please comment down below. Let me know what you thought of my picks and what you thought of the blushes that I love to wear during this winter season. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I hope you will consider subscribing and sticking around and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hi everyone. Why do I have such a hard time starting? Like why is hi everyone so awkward? How hard can you be? It's just hi everyone. Oh, I have sat down and gotten up and sat down like 20 times trying to prepare for this video. When, when will life cooperate? When? I always want to say, oh, it's my first. Of course it's your first, you dummy. You've only been on YouTube for like two weeks. 